So uh, today is going to be a uh, um, kind of a, a tough day to go through. We have lots of information. I'm going to pass it on, so get ready for it. And the fact that half of class is not here makes me feel sorry for them. Anyways, um, uh, we are going to talk about operators today. Understand what they are, how they work, and all the good stuff, and and understand how we're going to give them new meanings. Okay. Before we do that, we need to understand what we are doing. Okay. Uh, kind of refresh uh, our brains on what overloading is first, and then uh, try to apply that to the concept of operators. So the very first thing we need to understand today is, like to to recall and remember, is what is overloading, OK? So uh, anybody remembers what is overloading? Or, sh or should I choose my victims? Overloading. Go ahead. OK, so same names, different parameters. That's perfect, OK? So concept of overloading essentially means I already have one function. And I want the action of that function that it does happen in a different way based on the values that it's receiving. So I have an add that receives two integers. Now I want to have that receives two doubles. So I overload the add. Are we clear on that? So the concept of overloading needs an existing function and give that function a new meaning. You cannot have overloading with only one function. It doesn't make sense. Are we all clear on this? Do we all understand this? So overloading does not make sense when you only have one action. You need to have an action. You need to give that action a new meaning. Therefore, we call that overloading. Are, are we all clear on this? OK? All right. So in other words, what we are going to do, we are going to make all the operators that we know in C++, we're going to make all the operators that we know to work with objects they have never worked before. OK? You had a student, right? We created it. What, is it. what was the last, sorry, what was the last assignment you have done? It was a store. So let's say you wanted to add a toy to a store, right? So you, did you have an add function for it? What was it? It was like an add, like an add function to add a toy to a store. Just imagine instead of add, you use plus equal to add a toy to a department or to a store, right? Plus equal is designed for primitive values only, like integers, doubles, floats, characters, things like that. They don't work on stores and toys, right? OK, so we need to learn that. So the first thing we need to understand is that the operator must exist to be able to overload it, OK? Which means you cannot make at sign an operator, because at sign is not an operator in C language. Because it's not, you cannot overload it. When I say C, I mean C++, you know that, right? OK, so anything that already exists you can overload it, with some exceptions. That's your responsibility. Go read the notes. In the notes, it exactly explains like, the exceptions. So you can literally overload everything other than a few. Um, go read them and see what they are, what you cannot overload. So after doing all that, we need to go to another aspect. When we are overloading a function, let's say I have a print function. Print function accepts one argument. I can overload that by creating print with two arguments, correct? So one print has one argument, the other one has two arguments. That's not the type of overloading we are doing with operators. With operators, the number of arguments, which we call operands for operators. So argument for a function is an operand for an operator. We'll go through it in detail. It must exactly be a match, but the type should be different. 
So you, you cannot add to the arguments of an operator. I cannot make a plus that receives a left and a right operand to receive three things. It is impossible. That's not how math works. So to overload operators, you need to be exact in, uh, you need to be exact in their, you need to be exact in uh, their number of arguments, but of course you've got to change the arguments to what you want. Are you okay with this? Okay, so now let's talk about arguments. Let's talk about, uh, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about, let me just, uh, so we are going to talk about operators to see what they are and exactly how they work. Okay, so first we have to understand the lingo. We have to understand the, the buzzwords. So when I say operand, when I say operator, when I say prefix, when I say postfix, when I say binary, when I say unary, what do I mean? So we're going to go through it. We're going to categorize the operators. Then we're going to start seeing how we can actually make them uh, do different things. So operators are, operators are, uh, in two main categories. Okay, so now we have to remember that. So operators are in two main categories. Category number one, or we call them binary operators. Category number two, they are unary operators. Okay, now I'm going to explain exactly what they are. A binary operator is an operator that accepts two operands. That's why they call it binary. It doesn't mean that it does binary action. It goes a bit it's, that's not the case. When, I, when we say mathematically, what is a binary operator? This is a binary operator. If I say A plus B, that's a binary operator. Okay? It accepts two operands. So plus is the operator. A and B are the operands. Left operand and right operand. Are we clear on this? Easy, right? So to actually show different types of operators in uh, different types of uh, operators to be generalize it. This is what I use in here. So I'm going to do it like this. That means any operator, not only plus, it means minus whatever, any binary operator. So the examples of a binary operator could be minus plus. So, uh, so it could be a plus b, a minus b, a multiplied by b, a divided by b, a mod b, anything. Any binary operator. Are we okay with this? All right. Next, let's understand exactly how operators work. In, by default, and we can change that. No, actually, by default, a binary, uh, not by default, by nature, uh, a binary operator receives two operands. So we call these two guys. So this one and this one. We call them operands. This is the second time that I'm actually writing in past 10 years. So the, the first one was for the other OP244 section yesterday. So I apologize for the lack of skill in writing. So try to, uh, the, um, the, uh, what you call it, uh, decrypt the Sanskrit that I'm writing or, or the, the hieroglyphs that I'm writing over this. <laughs> try to see what it is. So, okay. so. So operands, so that's that. And so, and this one we call an operator. Are we okay with this? Okay, now, all operators by default return a value, which means their job is to deal with the two things they have. So if they take the two values they have, whatever the values is, they do the operation they're supposed to, and then they return the value to whatever you want. We okay with that? Which means if you have, for example, if we have, for example, A plus B, and A is 2, and B is 3, the job of plus is to get the values of the 2, which means 2 will go into plus, 3 will go into plus, the result is to add these two things up and return the 5 back. Are we okay with this? 
So by nature, all operators do this, this return thingy, okay? And this is the only thing you can choose not to when you are overloading. The rest, you have to do it. A binary operator re receives two operands, and it's doomed to do so. You cannot have a binary operator without two operands. If the name is binary, it's supposed to have two. But what it returns, it's your choice if you want to return something or not for whatever reason. Um, we can change that, but let's not do that. Like, well, well, well you'll see. You tr always try to, to follow the rule of polymorphism, which is... Who's going to tell me what is polymorphism? Seriously? Polymorphism? Yeah, you, you already stuck this. You wanted to say? No? <laughs> polymorphism? The, the, the same thing. That's the same thing in different ways, which means if you are overloading plus, you better do plus. Okay? You can't do multiplication when you're doing plus because you're overloading it. Well, that's crazy. Let's not do that. When I'm doing plus, I'm supposed to add two things up. Don't do minus. That doesn't make sense. Okay? So, again, because this is C++ and you have the power to do crazy things, I'll strongly suggest not to do it. <laughs> okay? So, that's that. So, we know that. Now, binary operators fall in two separate categories. So we have two separate types of binary operators. We have ones that have side effect, and the ones that they have no side effect. OK? Side effect, no side effect. What does it mean? A binary operator who has side effect will change one or both operands during its process. Okay? For example, if I have A plus B, will plus change A or B? Will plus change A or B? No, it won't. It just takes their values and returns the sum. A and B remain what they were before. Do we understand this? Are we okay with this? All right? If I say A divided by B, nothing's going to happen to A or B. It's just going to take the value of A divided by B and return the, the, the result. Are we okay with this? But if I say A is set to B, this operator has side effect on left operand which means the value of the left operand will change. If I, have, if I have 5 in A and I have 6 in B, then that 5 will be overwritten by 6. Are we clear on this? That's what we call side effect. If I say A plus equal B, this operator has side effect. It actually changes the left operand. The left operand becomes whatever the value of B will be added to it. Of course, it's going to return the value, but that's irrelevant. Okay? Obviously, if I have over here 2 in A and I have 5 in B, the 2 will be overwritten by 5, so it will receive the value of 5, and it's going to set the value of B to 2, and then it's going to return that 2. Oh, sorry, that 5. <laughs> So it's going to set, overwrite that 2 with 5, and it's going to return that 5. Are we okay with this? I know these are like boring stuff that you need new since kindergarten, but I have to, we have to first be absolutely clear, and we have presence of mind of what our operators do so we can change them. To change something, you need to know what they are. Okay? So if I say, again, boring, I know. So if, I, if this is 2 and this is 5, the two values will be, so 5 will go through plus equal operator will be added to 7, and the value that is returned will be over here, 7. Are we okay with this? And after this, 
A will be 5 and A will be 7. And therefore, they have side effects. Are we okay with this? Are we okay 1? Are we okay 2? Hello. Are we okay? Right. Are you okay? You okay? Yeah. Okay, you're okay. All right. So let's do some programming. Okay? So we have these things. I'm going to go to the next ones too, but first I'm going to clear one thing up and then we're going to go to the next one. Okay? So I'm going to write my code inline. What is the meaning of inline? You remember what inline is? Inline? Inline? Writing a code inline is? It means I will write the definition and uh, declaration of the method inside the class. I'm not going to bring it outside. It's not going to be a module with two separate C++ and header class. Everything is going to be inside the class because I'm writing an example. You can separate it later on. Okay, you can turn it to a two-file module later on. I'm just teaching. That's why I'm going to put everything in, in one file. Are we okay with that? All right. I have a cup. So we're going to write a cup. So we're going to create a class called cup. Uh, before doing that, obviously, I'm going to have include because we want to show some values and stuff uh, using namespace std. And I'm going to create a class cup. OK? A cup has a capacity. Correct? I can put some first. I'm just clearing what we are simulating here. OK, we are simulating a cup. A cup has a capacity, 400 cc's, 250 cc's, whatever it is. It has a capacity. I'll take that. So I'll put that one over here. So that's number one. So I'm going to say I have a capacity. Are we all OK with this? What is the next thing a cup have? has? It has. Uh, obviously, the capacity is not always full. It has a volume of thing in it, whatever it is. Coffee, orange juice, water, whatever it is. So it has, for example, 200 cc of orange juice inside a 400 cc cup. Are we are are okay with this? Do we understand? Can, can a volume exceed capacity? No. It's going to overflow. Make the thing invalid. Remember that. So it becomes all wet and, and thing, and you have to throw it away. We don't want that, right? So that's our business logic, right? So now, in here, I'm going to create int m volume. Obviously, I'm going to create uh, a constructor. Now, there is this thing that they say uh, uh, attributes. What are attributes? This class is not very responsive, and I do not like it, OK? Study before you come to class, please, OK? When I ask questions, too many people pass, and I want them to answer. So, so every, anyway, remember what an attribute is. When I say attribute, what do I mean? Full duplex communication. Did we talk about full duplex communication at the beginning of class? No, no. Did we talk about, could, did we talk about uh, full duplex and half duplex communication? We did not, did we? That's why. OK, See, we are wasting our operator time talking about data communication. OK, you have to place communication is when you are listening to radio, which means the person talking in a radio talks and hopes that listeners are listening. But there might be no one listening, right? That's a have to place communication. So the information is going. You're hoping that the other party is listening. Where, uh, uh, what do you call it, walkie-talkie or talkie-walkie? Which one is correct? Walkie-talkie? So walkie-talkie is full duplex. Why? I say something, and I say, you, and you hear it, and I don't know, one person says, Roger, the owns an over, things like that. So I say, like, are you coming here? And you say, yes, I'm coming here. So you're talking with each other, right? That's full duplex, which means the person talking can get acknowledgment from the person who's listening to understand what's going on. I want this class to be full duplex, okay? 
when I say something, I want to know that, it, that you got it. And, and that, that's why when I ask a question, try to answer even if you think you don't know it. So I do, I do a liberal thing. So first I ask, OK, um, how, what is the answer? And if you don't, then I'm going to start from the beginning. And I keep going like that. OK, so, so please, uh, uh, yeah. So attribute, not you, because a person who talks, I don't want them to talk anymore. So uh, att attribute, what was an attribute in a class? Data meme. Thank you. See, that was easy, wasn't it? So why didn't you say earlier? <laughs> OK, so data member. So data member. So they say that data members are always private. And methods, what methods? What are methods? Member functions. Member functions are public. So they say data members are private. Member functions are, so essentially data are private and functions are public. This is an absolute BS. OK, if you heard that, it is wrong. OK, depending on business logic, you might need to have some attribute being public. And you might want some actions to be private. Some actions are only used for other parts of the class, and therefore they become private. So remember, you can never categorize something to be public and private. These are the questions that came up in the other class, so I'm explaining it over here too. It's very important to remember that. There are no rules that something has to be, some category of things, they have to be private and the other ones, they have to be public. You have to look at business logic and see, does it make sense? Like, does it make sense if I'm building the car, I make the engine public? No. The engine of the car is private. Nobody knows there is an engine. All you need, you have a throttle, you have a brake, and you have a steering wheel. Those are your public actions. That is actually connected to a private action of your car that is the engine. So you never, if I ask you, unless you're a mechanic or your parents are mechanics, you have no idea how, how engines work. You just know that I'm going to push the throttle, and it goes. And I push the brake, and it stops. That's the only thing you know. And that's encapsulation. We make things that we, you're, it's not related, private. So keeping that in mind, we're going to go over here. So I'm going to create a constructor for this. So I'm going to cre create a cup. And this cup of mine uh, can receive, uh, uh, so when you build, when you make a cup, the cup is usually empty, right? So I'm just going to create it with capacity. So I have a cup. and. It only accepts a capacity. And when I create the cup, the capacity will be set to whatever the capacity is. And we are assuming with respect to, uh, I don't want to, let's actually do it. It's impossible for capacity to be negative, right? So I'm going to make that unsigned integer. And unsigned integer volume. Let's make it like that. So, OK, so I'm setting the capacity so I know what it is. And when a cup is built, what is the volume of the material in it, whatever it is, the content? It's always 0, right? So m volume is 0. So that's how I create my cup, right? And then I want to, and then I want to show the value that, the, that what, what, the, what, how much stuff I have in this cup. So I'm going to create a, a display function. And in this display function, I'm going to show, uh, I'm going to say C out in here. What do I say? I'm going to say uh, M volume. And I'm going to say out of M capacity. I'm just building up the things that I want, OK? And I'm going to test this program of mine right now, and then I'm going to make it better in two seconds int main, return 0. And I'm going to say, what do I say? And I'm going to say, say cup, coffee. And I'm going to say, oh. And let's say by default, a cup. What is a default cup? Like you go to Tim Hortons, you get a, like, what is a regular? Anybody knows? Like, is that a, is that a standard cup? Let's say 250 cc's. Are we OK with that, 250? 250 OK with everyone? Everybody's looking at me like I'm an idiot. Come on. We're ju just trying to be, I'm just trying to be uh, 
simulating a real thing, for heaven's sake. And it's an on sign, so it's a good idea to put you over there, just so we know it's an on sign. Okay? So I'm going to say uh, create a cup of coffee and coffee dot display. Run the beautiful program of mine, and I know that. The coffee cup of mine has zero out of 250. Are we okay with this? Okay. But there is a rule that I'm applying from now till later. Uh, whenever you have any function that is supposed to do either input or output, okay, you got to make sure that the input-output object flows through it. Why? Because the sky is high, okay? It's just a rule. Okay, you follow and later on you're going to see why it makes sense to do so. When we are after the midterm, when we understand virtuality and stuff like that, you're going to say, oh, so that's the reason. Okay, so this is the rule, to flow through it. What does it mean? You have the C out, because it's a display, display is C out, right? And C out is O stream, so you have to make O stream flow, flow through this. How? I'm going to say get uh, an O stream. So in here, I'm going to say O stream reference. Okay, let's call it OSTR. And by default, I'm going to make it C out. So, so if they don't mention it, it's going to be C out. And instead of C out in here, I'm going to actually put OSTR. Okay, and I'm not going to go to new line because I don't know if it's going to be middle of something or the end of something. I don't know. So I'm not going to say, and I will re return that O stream. So I'm going to say O stream reference. And uh, at the end, I'm going to say return OSDR. Are we okay with this? It works the exact same way. Nothing changed. I run it. It still works the exact same way. Because I did not mention what is being printed, but of course, it doesn't go to new line afterwards. So uh, in here, I can now I can say display of 200 cc a cup of coffee. Now I can do this. Why? Because display is actually returning C out. Because it's returning C out, I can display and actually show it like that. Are we okay with this? Okay. And in here I can say C out here is, I can do that. I can actually say C out, C out here is. So this C out will actually get called and then pass through display. So this is going to be shown before. So if I run this now, uh, I will have here is zero of 250 cc cup of coffee. Are we okay with this? All right. Of course, I'm not going to do that, but just just wanted to show you. Actually, why not? Let's actually. So this is our cup. Any questions down to this point? All right. So the first one is going to be 0, 1, cup and display. <laughs> Now let's add some coffee to this thing. I want to add some coffee to this. So what do I do? We write eventually like uh, our friend said over there. Um, I talked to you 50 times and I forgot your name. Can you believe? Yeah. OK, so, so I, my apologies. Uh, I, again, I, I apologize at the beginning of the semester. I'm going to keep apologizing. Then I'm going to first forget your name. And secondly, I'm going to mispronounce your name. So I apologize for that. Everybody. Okay. All right. So as Jack said, eventually we're going to add an add function to this add to add some coffee. So I'm going to say over here void add uh, unsigned and uh, volume. Some volume will be added to it. <clears throat> and when I'm adding the volume to this thing, I need to make sure that adding the volume is actually uh, is, uh, is done properly, which means when it actually adds the volume, we need to make sure that that volume is not exceeding the capacity. We need to know that, right? So for that, what I will do in here, I'm going to say, uh, first, let's write a set function to set it. So I'm going to write over here, void set, uh, unsigned, int volume, 
and in that set function, I'm setting the volume. So I'm going to say uh, if volume is less than or equal to m capacity, okay? If it's less than or equal to m capacity, do the setting, okay? So therefore, I'm going to say m volume is set to m capacity. And if it's not, if it's greater than m capacity, okay, then something is wrong. That's going to be overflow. So right over here, I'm going to say m capacity, or I'm going to say set empty. And set empty set empty could be confusing. It could be confused with, with emptying the cup. Set empty is setting it to an invalid empty state. So all the empty states that you talk, we called it safe empty state. Remember that? It's a very long name, but the correct name for that is that invalid safe, safe invalid empty state or invalid safe empty state. It's an invalid state that the object it is. You want to recognize that this object is invalid. Okay, so I'm going to say set invalid instead of set empty. So it essentially means set empty in other things, but because empty in cups actually means something, I'm going to actually that set that one to invalid. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Because at the moment I was thinking about M capacity to be set to zero, that's why M capacity came out. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah. So in here now, in here, is to, uh, in here I'm going to say M capacity set to zero because you cannot have a cup with zero capacity, right? So that's my invalid empty state. Again, you have to think of what is an impossible value for your object to have, and you make that one. So I'm going to set it to invalid over there. And now I can actually test to see if it's valid or not. And as you see, I primarily, things that I do not know that if I want to use or not, publicly, I put it in private. If later on I, I see it's needed to be called by public, then I'll bring it out. So in here, I'm going to say void uh, is invalid. Obviously, it's a constant thing because it's not supposed to change the content. It should just tell me if it's invalid or not. And I'm going to return. Oh, Boolean, Boolean, what are you doing? It's going to return uh, M capacity being equal to zero. Are we okay with this? Anybody have any problem with this? No problem. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Everyone? You okay? Are we okay? You okay? Okay. All right. So now in here in display, I can actually check to see if not is invalid, then display the thing. Otherwise, I'm going to say OSDR invalid cop object. Are we, oh, and no new line, no new line, no new line. Are we good? Are we okay with this? Still, I'm not in operators. I'm just designing something so I can start up the, the operators. Yes. If you wanted it. You never, in a real thing, when you are doing a console application, you never have a new line after an displaying an object if it's a one-liner. If it's a form thing, yes. If you want to have several lines, yeah. But if you want to just show one value, if you put new line, then you're going to completely screw up everything you want to do with that. If you want to, for example, have a table and have different cups and show the values inside a table, you can't do it because it goes to new line, right? So you always choose to do it. And you'll see it's going to come out very handy later on. So. Now everything is working, so I have all the good stuff set over here, hopefully. I'm going to minimize all those things, so because I know what they're doing, I just want to. Oh, uh, and now I'm going to go to add. So in add, I need to set the volume of the, add this volume to the current volume of the object. Are we all okay with this? How do I do that? I simply reuse my code. I'm going to say set uh, volume plus m volume. 
And that's going to validate for me. I don't need to care about it. That's a good thing about having validation done in a set function so you forget about it. You don't need to remember anymore what an invalid state is. You just use your functions as you go through. So that's adding that. Now if I actually create the cup over here, I can actually go over here. And so I'm, I'm going to take that here thingy out. I don't want that. A cup of coffee is fine. Now I'm going to say over here. So let's show the cup of coffee over there. And I'm not going to show that message anymore either because we made, we made our point. I want it to be just uh, uh, focus on, on, the, on the value. So I'm, in here, I'm going to say coffee dot add. And I'm going to add 100 cc of hot coffee in this thing. And I'm going to drink it. So coffee dot display. So if I run the program, and I'm going to walk through it, obviously, to, to kind of go through it and see exactly how it works. So this is how, we're going to go, how it's going to work. So it calls a default constructor. Therefore, capacity of 250 is applied and the volume is zero. Then it comes and displays the thing. We know that. I'm not going to walk through that. Now it's going to add. So it's going to bring the add up over here. So it goes into add. The already existing volume is zero. And this one is 100, so it's going to ask 0 and 100. It sets it to 0 and 100. That 100 is less than capacity. Therefore, everything is good. Volume is set. It comes out. Then it comes to display. It just let's do a walkthrough to make sure we understand it is valid or invalid. So it says if it's not invalid, it comes over here. Capacity is not 0. Therefore, it's a valid object, and therefore, it's displayed. And I have 100 out of 250. Are we OK with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? No. So now that we are okay with this thing, let's actually do something else. First of all, at the end of the class, can you see this or is too small? It's good? It's good? Small? How about now? Everybody can see this? I want to use as much real estate as I have over here. OK. So let's add another 50 cc's of coffee over here. So I'm going to go coffee dot add 50. And then I'm going to add, oh, I, can't, I cannot go in that over there. Oh, actually, let's do something else. Remember I told you that whenever you are returning void, don't. Use that opportunity to return the reference of the current object. It's good for your health. You can, you can, use, you can use that later on. So this Boolean is not going to work, but this set thingy, I'm going to set it to cup reference, and I'm going to return the cup. So return this. And Boolean remains as is. This set uh, embedded, I'm going to actually make it the same. So it's going to be uh, cup reference, return this. And in here, again, this add, I'm going to say cup reference, return this. It's not going to make, it's not going to make any difference to our execution. It's the same. In here, I'm just adding. And I'm going to say coffee dot display again. And as you will see, uh, the execution will have uh, 50 cc's added to it, and I have 150. Are we OK with this? Now I'm going to go nuts and add another 25. And you'll see why I'm doing all these things. So I'm going to add another, uh, let's say, uh, I'll go 75. 75 cc's of coffee added to that. So the three times that I'm going through it, it's 225 out of 150. Are we good? So let's, again, minimize everything and just focus on one thing. I think the other class is having a break up there because I see the, I hear the chairs going back and forth. Uh, what is add doing? It's adding a value to cup, correct? When we write, when we write, when we write, 
a plus equal b. So let me just bring this up so we can actually see what I'm talking about. When we are saying a plus equal b, what is plus equal doing? It is adding to the value of a, correct? So plus equal is a good operator to have instead of add function or beside the add function. If I want to add coffee to a thing, I don't, I'm not going to say add, I'm going to say coffee plus equal 150. Coffee plus equal 50. And it's going to add. So let's do it. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to copy the whole thing. Just take a look. And I'm going to change this add to operator plus equal. Nothing else. Did I do anything? It's identical. Nothing has changed. I just had an add. I made it operator plus equal. Are we good? So in my code, instead of add in here, I can say operator plus equal. And in here, I can say operator plus equal to. Correct? I just named the function operator plus equal. Operator plus equal add. When I have add is coffee dot add. When it's operator plus equal, I have coffee dot operator plus equal. Are we okay with this? So if I run the program, it works the exact same way. Absolutely no difference. So it does the add. So when it goes to add, it goes to add, sets it and returns and displays. And when it goes to operator equal, it goes to operator equals and does the same thing. And displays. And operator equal and displays. Are we okay with this? Any questions on that? Good news is yes. No, it's a keyword. Okay. So actually, that's how you overload an operator. So as not remove the parentheses, you can literally do this. Take a look. And now let me recompile. So when I run the code, as you'll see, it comes over here, it calls operator plus equal, correct? Well, when it comes over here, it calls operator plus equal. So when plus equal makes the compiler go, huh, what the heck is that? As soon as the compiler says that, it says, let me see if this thing is overloaded in coffee or not. What is the type of coffee? Cup. Do I have an operator plus equal? Yes, I will call it. What is the left operand in this plus equal? The owner of plus equal operator, correct? And what is the right operand? It's an integer. Integer? The owner is cup. Ta-da! Are we okay with this? Now, we need to talk about object orientation and non-object orientation thing. In C language, IPC 144. I am too heavy for these tables. Yes. In, in C language, if we had this scenario, how, do you, how would you write the add function? Because you couldn't have member, member uh, functions, right? You would have actually pass the structure as the first argument of the add and pass the integer of the second argument of the add. So add would receive the, the cup and the integer, correct? With two arguments, okay? That was non-object oriented uh, add writing for, for things. So we can do all that with uh, operators too. So anything that you write as an object oriented way you can write it as a non-object oriented way, as, a, as an operator overload that is not a member of a, of a class. We call those operators helper functions or helper operator overloads, whatever you call. You never do that unless you have to. Okay? This question came like, I have a very good student in other OOP244 and he questions everything, okay? Which is very good. He, he kept asking, so why do I need to do member operator overload when I can actually do it regularly, like just write a spherical function? Because we are learning C++. 
because we, our aim and focus is to write an object-oriented program. And to write an object-oriented program, your first rule of business is to follow encapsulation. And encapsulation means packing the data and behavior together, which means first you should try to make it a member. If you can't, and you see it's impossible, we're going to come to it later, you can make it non-member. We'll give you those, all those examples after we went through all the object-oriented ones. Okay? But for now, just remember, all the things that I'm doing as members, they can be done as non-members. We'll show you the things, and you'll see how everything works. Okay? And obviously, this add of mine, this operator plus of mine now, <clears throat> has side effect. Correct? Because it's changing the coffee. Right? So, <clears throat> I'm going to save it. And get out. So, this one is 0, 2. Uh, binary with side effect. One of the good things of writing it in a header file and thing is that I don't have to minim keep minimizing things. It's just in another file, right? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so, now let's say instead of here, I'm going to have C1 as the first cup, and C2, and C2 as the second cup. Okay? Second cup. Ooh. Okay, anyways. So, and let's say they are both 250. So I have C1 display, C1 add, okay, and I have a C3. That is the third cup. So I have three cups. I could have made it an array. I didn't. Why didn't I make it an array? Ah, forget it. Later. Okay. So now I'm going to have, I'm going to write over here. In, so in here, I'm going to say c1.display. And in here, um, uh, I'm going to say c2 plus equal 50. We know that plus equal is add, so let's actually use plus equal for all of them. And I have, so this one is C2, okay, dot display. And now I'm going to say C3 is set to C2 plus C1. And in here, I'm going to say C3.display. OK? So what's happening here now? I have another binary operator that doesn't have side effect. Right? Based on the same rule, plus only works for primitive types. When compiler looks at this, what does it say? Huh? What the heck? Plus doesn't work with two cups. Right? Plus doesn't work with two cups. So I need to see if a cup has a member operator plus. Let's create it. It is operator plus. That's the left one. Correct? What it returns, obviously it returns a cup, so I'm not going to, so I'm going to write over here cup. I don't know if it's going to be a reference or not, but we'll, we'll do it like that. So cup rate, uh, operator plus, and then it receives a cup at left, which is operator plus itself, and I need a cup at right. But it doesn't change that cup, correct? Because it doesn't change that cup, I have to make sure I enforce that. So I'm going to say constant cup reference write operand. I'm going to write operand. Okay? And to enforce that left side effect doesn't happen either, I put a const over here too. 
And that is why I cannot return a reference and say return this. I can't do that. Why can't I do that? Because this is not changed. I have 100 here, 50 here. I want CT to C3 to have 150 cc's of liquid in it. Because C2 is not changed, C1 is not changed. So it's as if saying, I want the exact same amount of coffee as C2 and C1 together. That's what I want, what I'm doing here. And if I want to do that, I want this, doesn't, this one not to change. So what do I do? I have to make this one constant too, which is there. And uh, returning the value is impossible because C2 doesn't change, so nothing's accomplished. Therefore, I have to create a new cup here. So I'm going to create a cup, okay, with the capacity. What's going to be the capacity of the cup? The new cup. It's going to be the sum of both of them, right? When you think about it. Pardon me? No, I'm using the constructor. Oh, so M capacity is this plus, uh, oh, no, I don't need to because it's cup. Cup has access to cup. <laughs> M capacity. So the capacity is the capacity of both, correct? And I'm going to say, and this is uh, the result. And now in here, I'm going to say result plus equal m volume plus m volume, uh, uh, right operand m volume. Correct? Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this, everyone? Are we okay with this? And then at the end, I'm going to say return. Press. So what I just did, I said the right operand will be uh, a cup. The left operand is me, and I'm going to return a cup. Right? <clears throat> so let's do it. And before doing anything, I'm going to print all three cups. OK? So I'm going to say over here, I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to say uh, C1 dot display. And in here, I'm going to say C out just to know which one is what. C1. OK, and I'm going to show them all. So it's C2, C2, C3, and C3. So C1, I can actually put these values over here too so we can actually see what it is, what is it going to be? We don't need that because we already displayed it. I'm lazy to type, so I'm going to do this. OK? So <clears throat> let's see what happens in here. Let's walk through. First, it's going to display the three, which we have no problem with. Correct? They're all empty. Are we OK with that? Then we add 100 to C1. We know exactly how it works. I'm not going to walk through it. And we show it. We have 100 in it. Are we OK? Then we're going to add 50 to C2 and display it. I have 50 out of 250. Are we okay with this? Right? Now, what should be the result? What do you expect the result of 3 to be? So, when I want, when I want this to happen, C3 must have 150 cc's in it, correct? All right? So, when it actually runs, it goes to plus the one that is not owner. The capacity of res result becomes the capacity of 2 because that's how it's supposed to be, that the cup becomes bigger, the amount. The volume becomes that volume. So if I actually look at res, I don't know why it's not showing the res in here. It, was, it had the same problem in the other one. But when it returns, it's OK. I have no idea. This is a bug in uh, the uh, IntelliSense. 
Okay? So, so we return it. And now, if you look at C3, the C3 will have 500 as capacity. Oops. In reality, can you pour something in a cup and the cup expands bigger? What's wrong? What did we do wrong? Well, we have to. What if each one had 200? I don't want it to go invalid. It is not invalid. Two to two, two, 200, it should be 400 and 500, correct? Obviously, the target should be invalid then because it exceeds. The problem is that we are forgetting that we have over here one operator that we did not overload. That is the assignment operator. The assignment operator is good old C assignment operator. It has two structures, left and right. Blindly, it copies everything from right to left. And because res has 500 in it, the 500 gets copied over here. For this to work, I have to overload the assignment too. There are two operators here involved, not one. You follow what I'm saying? So to do that, I need to say, hey, the operator equal should be OK, too. So I have to say cup. I'm not going to put reference. I'm going to check it first. Then I'm going to say operator uh, equal. And in here, I'm going to get a constant cup reference uh, right operand. And in here, oh, wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. Operator plus, operator equal belongs to the current, to the left object, right? So it can return this. It doesn't matter. The result of the left one is the one that is. In here, when you are saying A plus equal B, and if I have an assignment and put it at left, the result is 7, and A is 7. So it can return 7 itself. There is no, no temporary thing is needed. In here, I can actually have reference. So I'm good to go. All I need to do over here is to set the volume that I have now to the right operands. So overwrite what I already had with the volume of the other one and return this. Of course, the this of returning this will go to cyberspace because there is nothing behind to catch it. It's just going to go to garbage, which we don't care. This is what we need to look at. Now, if we actually look at this, we actually look at what happened over here. This is the execution. So let's stop it and go do, do it one more time. So I'm going to come right down to this point. So it comes over here. It displays all the good stuff that we have. Then it comes in here. The result is created a temporary object. That temporary object is returned. Now at right, I have res that is dying because it was in other object, correct? In other thing. But if right before it's dying, the, uh, uh, the, uh, it's going to be passed to the assignment operator. So when I actually get into the assignment operator, the right operand is the good old res that we had, which with 500 and 150. But the current one that we have, so if I go to autos over here and type and look at this, you will see that this has 250 capacity and zero, which is C3. So now it's going to set the value, return it, and get out. And now I have 150 out of 200. So now it's actually working properly when everything is overloaded. So now we have looked at these things. Let's actually look at the signatures and see how we can actually recognize how things are done. Okay? So, how things are actually created. Are we okay down to this point? Yes. The assignment operator. The assignment operator, yes. That, so whenever in doubt, do this. Take a look. That's the first one, correct? And this is the second one. Right? 
So I'm just going to comment it just for you to remember that that's actually the case. That's why we have operator overloading, because it just makes sense mathematically. Okay? So C2 plus equal C3. That's what we did, right? No, no. We did C3 plus equal C1. Why is it giving me an error? Oh, not plus equal. Ah, my plus equal is not working properly. Why? Because plus equal is returning reference of why is it? Ah. I have to check to see what is, why is it wrong. We'll find out. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, uh, what should we call it? Write something that, uh, if it's because of our restrictions, constant stuff, we'll go through it. Don't worry about it now. Clear your mind? <laughs> okay. Okay, so. Yes. So, uh, with all assignment operators, first the right is evaluated, then assignment happens. Yes. 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 I don't want it to, because in COPS, that's, that doesn't happen. If I'm simulating that. Yes. 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 No, it should be invalid. So if I have two cups of 250 cc's, each one has 200 cc's, and I want to empty that to another 250, what's going to happen? The first one is 200, the second one overflows, right? Renders the cup invalid. It shouldn't change its size. It should make it invalid so you know you're not supposed to pour more than you have. They should have an if statement over here. They're checking to see what the volume is, which we don't have that capacity any yet. That's next. This session is going to continue in our lab session, by the way. Okay? Are we okay down to this point? All right. So, so back to our operators in here. When we actually, so we are talking about binary operators. Any type of binary operator, side effect or not side effect is overloaded like this. So if you have something like this, so I have, I have TA of object A, I have TB of object B, and I have TC of object C, which means type of A is TA, Type of B is TB, and type of C is TC. Are we okay with this? There are classes, right? If you want to overload this, I don't know why I had the third one, but anyways. So if I have, say, B operator C, and the value return is A, if that's the case, in any case that that's the case, you will have an operation between the two and it's returning that type, okay? If that's the case, your operator overload as a member is always like this. The operator belongs to type B, which means you have T, B, operator, whatever, okay? And in here, you are receiving TC, C, and it returns a TA. Okay? Now, remember, when I mention this, you all need to know that these are just the types. This might be, might be constant. Reference, ref, constant reference, whatever. Here, it might, so we might have a const over here based on our uh, business logic. We might have a reference over here based on our business logic. We might have a const over here. We might have a reference over here. And we might have a const over here. We don't know. 
What is important is general signature. So first you write this, you implement, then you think which one should be const, which one should be reference, and why. And then you modify it that way. So that's how it is. That's exactly how you do it. And if you look at the code, that's exactly what we have done. For every single thing that if I had plus equal, this plus equal is, uh, uh, where is it? Plus equal, plus equal. You see it returns a cop reference, and it gets an unsigned, uh, gets a, uh, an unsigned volume because it's receiving an integer, and so on and so forth. And you can, like, for example, if I had, if I wanted to see what I want, like, for example, if I wanted to have over here saying, I want it, uh, let's have C4, not the explosive, but the, uh, so let's, if I have C4 over here, and this C4 of mine, Let's, let's make it like this, and I'm going to make this one 400 cc's, okay? Uh, if I want to be able to say C4 is set to C3 plus 200 cc's, so I you got to say how much coffee you want, and I'm going to say whatever C3 has plus 200. So this 200 over here is just an integer, correct? All right? And... If I want this, what is the signature for it? The signature for it would be the exact same thing like over here that we had with plus. But instead of constant cop yada, 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 I need an unsigned integer. Unsigned int volume. And in here, instead, and in here, the capacity obviously remains the same because I don't change anything. And uh, the volume is going to be just the volume that I'm adding. And it returns the result. Are we okay with this? Notice, so what I just did, I, in here now, if I actually come to this point, and I have C4 display, so... All right? If I have C4 display and I just get into, oh, I passed through. <laughs> Sorry, I wanted to stop beforehand. So it says I have a plus cop at left integer at right. It's not in the library of C++. Does C3, that is a cop, have a plus? Yes, it actually has two of them. Correct? Which one of them has an integer at right? That's the one that's going to be used. So it actually jumps to that one, and the volume over here becomes 200, and so on and so forth. And the rest is history. Are we okay with this? Okay. Now I want to confuse the heck out of you as if you were not enough confused, okay? Let's take a look at this. I am commenting this out. You know that there is no plus that accepts an integer at right, correct? It is absolutely impossible, correct? Let's see if it actually gives me an error or it works. How did that happen? This should give you some kind of a hint. How did that happen, seriously? The answer is, we know that from IPC 144, when you have uh, double x equals an integer i, does the compiler give you an error? No. What does it do to i to be able to put it in double? It casts it, right? It means it builds a double out of that integer value and passes it out, correct? Right? In here, compiler says, I have an integer, and I have a plus, and I have a C3. Does C3 have a plus? Yes, it does. 
correct? What is it receiving? A cup, correct? Can I build a cup out of an integer? Yes, I can. So it builds a cup, an empty cup. And it's not what you wanted. Some garbage thing happens because compiler casted it for you. It could. Compiler tries to resolve. So if you just put an integer and your class has a constructor that can make something, even if you put a double, it will work because it first casts the double to an integer, then integer to a cup, and then it shows the cup. So you got to be careful. Okay, you have to implement the things you want because unexpected things might happen, which are not what you wanted. It's still 150 and it's 400, a completely garbage thing. Why? Because it created a cup out of that thingy, that uh, value that we have. So therefore, you got to make sure that uh, uh, you actually have it. If you, you ha otherwise, it's possible that it's going to get uh, casted by the compiler, and doing so now, it actually makes things uh, work properly. I don't know. Oh. Yeah. So it's now 200 now, which is what it's supposed to be. Are we okay? Are we okay? All right. So, <clears throat> so uh, that was, uh, uh, those are binary operators. So all binary operators covered over here. So <clears throat> oh, I put it zero. Bad person I am. Uh, so this is actually two. Without side effect. And that's three. All right. Now. Unary operators. What is a unary operator? A unary operator is an operator that comes before. So let me just, uh, yeah, it comes before the, the name of the operand. So if, so if you have, so it's, it looks like something like this, right? Again, a unary operator has two different things. They're two different forms. It can either have side effect or no side effect. Okay? So again, I have two things over here. The one that they have side effect and the ones that do not have side effect. But in math, in math, this is the only thing you have. There is no unary operator that causes effect on the operator, on the operand. When you say minus 3, does 3 becomes minus? No. When you say minus A, A has the stuff in it. It just negates it and returns it, correct? It doesn't change the value of A. <clears throat> Side effect came with C language with these operators only. Plus, plus, and minus, minus. So if you do, so the side effect part, that's, that's what it is. Yes. We'll go to that. So the, and that falls into two categories. Postfix, prefix. Prefix is the standard thing that you see in math. There is no postfix unary operator in math. Think about it. Have you seen one? I know one, but I'm not going to mention it. <clears throat> we don't have anything that is postfix. Everything's prefix. <clears throat> so all the so this one is an exception, and because of the exception that is, it has a weird type of implementation. I'll come to, through it. Okay, so how do we implement uh, unary operators? They are exactly like binary operators with no argument. They belong. So if I write if I write something like this, the and whatever it returns. So the let's say so this is T A. 
and let's say I have a I have T B B and let's say this operator returns a B. If that's the case, then A becomes uh, belongs to T A. with nothing in it, and returns a TB. Again, this might be const, this might be constant reference or whatever. OK? So let's do it. For example, if I want to see if, if I want to see if, for example, a cup is valid or not. So if a cup is valid, or invalid, I want to see, and that's not, right? So if I say not cop, it means the, and if it returns true, it means the cop is invalid. I want that. So I want to do something like this. So in here, instead of 200, I'm going to put 500, okay? Now if I run it, it should have set it to invalid. My set didn't work. Let me just quickly look at it. F5. So it comes in here. It goes to res. Volume is zero. Oh, volume is 500. It goes to, did I set it to 500 in the, in the main? No, 400. So in here it comes volume is y capacity of capacity is 250. It is not. So it is supposed to set it to a capacity becomes zero. Oh, because the capacity is not copied. Because the capacity is not up. So our plus equal, uh, our assignment is not working properly then. Let me see, it returns res, and res in our assignment is now is an invalid, and the set is setting, so it sets the volume. Okay, so our set needs to be corrected. Our set, um, our assignment should be corrected. So in here I have to say if uh, rop dot is invalid, then uh, set uh, this to invalid. So this becomes set invalid. Else, that's that. Well, there goes my mouse. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so let's run it one more time. I thought that's going to actually, did my mouse die? There we go. So let's run it one more time. Build errors. No, what is the build error? Oh, because I have to call the function, not just the thing. There we go. Invite a couple. So that's perfect now. Okay? So, <clears throat> so now I want not. I want this thing, I, I do not want this to happen. I don't want C to actually, uh, C4 to get printed if it's invalid. I want to only get printed if it's valid. So I want to say if not C4, then in here I want to say C out, uh, the operation failed. Otherwise, I want to display. So I don't want the invalid object to get printed. If that's the case, I want the not operator to be overloaded, to show me that back. So if I want to do that, in here I have to say operator not. Obviously, I'm not changing the current object, and I'm returning a Boolean. And it is invalid. So in here, I can simply return is invalid. Return. So now my 
operator actually works in here, and when it gets to this point, it goes in here and returns is invalid, which is essentially m capacity being equal to, to zero, and it's going to say operation failed. All right? So that's, yes. Yeah, the argument is the object itself. No, if you don't, no, it, no, but because not and, because not and C4, they don't have a meaning together. When you say not C4, it means this has to be a logical, oper uh, logical object. It should be able to evaluate it to true or false. It can't. Correct? Because it can't, you have to overload the not operator. Let's say I want to add one CC to a cup. Easier than that? Let's say in here I am going C plus equal 50. Uh, let me it's actually becoming too, too crowded in here. Let me uh, remove all these. Uh, I'm going to say plus equal, and in here I'm going to have C. So cup C, and I'm going to say C plus equal 500, and I'm going to say not C. Okay, so let's say I want to actually, so that's that, uh, and in here I'm going to say C uh, plus equal 100, C dot display. And I want to add one to it. So I'm going to say plus plus C. And I'm going to say uh, C dot display. So I want it to be 101 CC. I want to add one CC to it. That's all. If I want to do that, how do I do it? Uh, because plus plus doesn't have a meaning with cup, I'm going to add one. For, and let me uncheck this Boolean too. And in here, I'm going to say operator plus plus. And obviously, it's not constant because it has to change. And I'm going to say uh, set uh, M volume plus one because I want to make sure it fails if it's too much. And obviously, I can return the current object out of it. So in here, I'm going to say uh, cup reference, and I'm going to return me. So now plus plus actually means something. I can actually add one to a to a cup. So it actually literally adds one to the uh, to the value of the cup. And if it comes right down here, what did I do wrong? C4. Do I have a C4 still somewhere? Oh. One more time. So as you see, it is displayed. Now plus plus is called. It goes to plus plus. It's 100, becomes 101, and makes it 101. OK? Uh, so it's added. And the other one, obviously, is going to say operation failed because it's 500. It's more than what it's supposed to be. Are we OK? Yes. Oh, well, that's, that's the part that I want to say. Because they are both unary, if I do something like this, so in here I'm going to say uh, D. I'm going to add a D over there too for future. So if I actually do this, C++, okay, you see I'm not getting any error, right? Old compilers would call the other one. <laughs> okay, old compiler says these are both unary, and unary belongs, so it has to be uh, belonging to that. But this one would wouldn't. The new compilers wouldn't. So they 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 had they actually had a problem. They said, okay, with all the rules and regulations we put, we said unary operators are members. So how do I distinguish between the two? The answer was that 
okay, because it's a silly thing and it only exists in, in C, let's make it a silly syntax too. And that int means, means nothing. That int, nothing. That means just postfix. There is no argument. Nothing is being received. So int here, only for plus plus and minus minus and nowhere else because those are the only postfix operators. So only for postfix operators, you have an int argument in here. And it, it means nothing. So in here, int only means postfix and is not an argument. And now if you run it, you'll see it actually adds it and makes it 102. But remember C? If I say over here D is equal to C++, and I say D dot display, what would be the value of D? It should, it, it is C because I'm returning to, but it should be, so remember that plus plus happens after the statement. So this makes it 101, so D should be 101, and C becomes 102, correct? All right, so let's run it. Not at all. You just overloaded it. Because you overloaded, you have to make it that way. You have to somehow do something so the old value is returned, not the new one. Otherwise, it won't. It's just a function. No magic is going to happen. That plus plus thingy is built into the uh, nature of C, C language. It, when you overload it, that magic is gone. You have to do it yourself. And, and it's, a very, it's a common way of doing it, but it's a very awful way of doing it, which is this. So what you do, because you want to fake it in here, you will say, you will say, uh, cup old, and you set this one to the capacity of the current object, right? Then you say old plus equal this, right? Or old plus equal, what is that? Old plus equal uh, m volume. So you add the volume to old. Now old has the old value, right? Everything is set. In here, instead of this, you return the old one. Obviously, you cannot return a reference anymore because this object is about to die. So you have to make it a normal one. So you say, I'm going to make a copy of the old one. Actually, I can do it like this. Because there is no dynamic memory allocation happening here. I can say old is equal to this. I can just do it like that. So I hold the current state of the object in the old one. I do the setting and return the old one. So what I'm returning out is a copy of the, the cup. It's not the cup itself, which sucks. But that's the case. Can't do anything about it. OK? I'm going to say over here, Fake it by sending the old one out, the old value out. Copy of the old value. Sending copy of the old value, old object. By returning a copy of the old object. Got it? So fake postfix effect, I'm going to say post fix effect. And it works with minus minus. The good news is that this is only for plus plus and minus minus. Doesn't apply to anything else because those are the only two freaky operators of, of C language. The rest are just regular operators, right? And that's that. I'm going to let you go early. That's why I'm not giving you a break, OK? Remember I told you bring your coffee, sleep well night before? That was the reason. Are you okay? <coughs> so, and these are, <coughs> let me just uh, run it. <coughs> so, 
So this is 0, 4 unary post and prefix dot CPP. OK? And please watch the video of the other section, too. It comes really handy. Because uh, 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 we talked almost about the same thing. Why this thing doesn't go down? Yeah, <clears throat> we talked about the same thing. Different example, almost the same thing, right? So you hear it with other pers perspective and questions coming up. So don't pack your stuff. We still have to go. <laughs> so more, so more thing. <clears throat> I have I have like ten more minutes, and I'm gonna do something here now. So what if I want non-object oriented operators overloaded? What if I want non-object oriented operators overloaded? Operators who are not members of any class. So these were all object oriented with all members, right? What if I don't want them to be members? What would be the signature? First of all, you got to be careful because the signature of member and non member may have a conflict. You can create the same overload as a member and a non member. That's not an overload. Because the signatures are identical, they both accept two arguments, they both return the same thing, there's going to be a conflict. It's going to say it's already implemented in the object while you are doing it outside. Okay? So to create a non-member, this is what happens. So you have a left operand and a right operand, correct? You have a left operand and a right operand. That's the operator, correct? So you create your operator, so it becomes... Okay, then you receive, so assuming, assuming this is TA, this is TB, and it returns TC. Uh, let's do it the way we did it before. So this is TB, uh, TA, yeah, TA, TB, and returns TC, okay? It returns type C. If that's the case, your left operand will be T A, left operand, T B, right operand, and you return a T C. And it doesn't belong to any class. This we call a helper. Oh. Helper function. All helper functions are written like this. You've done it, right? So this is helper function, helper operator function, operator, operator overload. The answer is why? I don't want anything object or non-object oriented. Why do I do that? Why do I do such a thing? The answer is two possibilities. First, you don't have access to source code of TA because in regular thing, TA should be the owner, right? If you don't have access to source code of TA, TA is a library class, like OStream. Can you go change the OStream class and add your little cup to it? No, you don't want to. But you want to print the cup on C out using insertion operator. You want to overload it. You cannot make it a member, therefore helpers. Number two, the left side is a primitive operator. What if the integer was left side of the cop? What if I had C3 is equal to 100 plus C2? If integer is at left side of the operator, you cannot make it a member because that's not a class, correct? For that, you need a helper. So helpers are needed. They really help. But don't overuse it. Never use a helper if you can have a member. We, may we might ask you to do so in a workshop, just so you know what the syntax is. But if you can, always a member. So, for example, as I mentioned right now, what if I wanted my cup to be printed like this? So instead of this freaky thingy that I was C display, C display, ugly thing that I was doing over here, what if I wanted to do this?
or make this coffee, coffee, and I want to have something like this. What if I want to do something like this? It doesn't make any difference. This and this are the same. Why? Because this C out is going to print a coffee and return a C out. Therefore, the next C out picks up C. Right? So if I want this to happen, I have to overload the top one. They are identical. I'm going to remove this. So how do I do this? First of all, I know it's not a member because I don't have access to OStream. OStream is not mine to change. It's a library class. I can't touch it. So I, what I need to know over here is first this. It is an operator insertion that I want to overload. What does it return? It should return a C out so NL could get printed after, correct? After this is done, the residue should be another C out, so the end L is printed. So it has to return C out. What is C out? O stream. Right? Now, what is the left operand in this operator? It is C out, which is O stream. So I'm going to put O stream, reference OSDR. What is the right one? C, which is a cup. When I print it, will I change it? No, I just want to print it. So it's a constant cup reference right operand. Right? This is what I want to write. Oh, operator. Okay? And luckily, I wrote my display properly. Let me just bring it close. So writing this is very easy. First of all, oh, I didn't write it actually properly. It is supposed to be const. Display doesn't change, remember? We said you have to make it const. Idiot, I didn't do that. So I'm going to say const over here. So that has to be const. Now, <clears throat> I have a cup that is const too, right? So I'm going to say write operand dot display. What am I displaying on? The O stream. What does display return? The O stream. Done. Now my cup can get printed with the thing I don't, oh, cup, my coffee cup. Coffee. Can get printed with C out like a normal thing. When I run it, it works the exact same way, like C out. Ta da. <clears throat> you see this? Why is this thing keeping? doesn't go away. I do not understand. Uh, get it out. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> you see this? Remember it. It's always like that. You should do this in your dreams when you're sleeping. Anything you wanted to get printed on C out, ta-da! You want to print student? It's O stream, operator O stream, or a constant student reference and student.display, which means the display in your student should be written properly. Okay? Anything. You want to read a cup? It's the same way. We have one minute. We'll do that the next time. But that's it. That's what we call a helper operator that is non-member. Helper non-member operator overload. As practice, overload this operator, so make this work. Make this work. Uh, make this work. C is set to, C is set to, say, 100 plus coffee. Of, got it? Make this work. 
which means at left side you have an integer, right side coffee. So it's exactly the same thing, and it returns a coffee. And watch the other classes thing, okay? Yes, badly. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> my, my other class is at 11.35. I have to run forest run type of a thing. And they are C, so I have to use every minute of the class. Sorry about that.